Good morning, everyone, and happy Tuesday. We are um, still on our money skills unit, and today we're going to talk about adding money and then using the next dollar up method. Okay, so last week we learned about next dollar up. Now this week we're going to add some money values and keep um, track of our place value, right, with that decimal point, and then we will implement the next dollar up method after we find our total cost, our total sum. So let's get into it. All right, an important aspect of shopping or double checking our receipts is knowing how to add money. When we add money, we need to make sure that our decimal points line up so that we are adding the appropriate place values to find the total sum. So if you look at the worksheet that's underneath the main title here, adding money values, you'll see that in the worksheet, they have aligned all of the place values starting from right to left. And so I will go over what those place values are in just a second and um, what they mean, okay? All right, so when you're thinking about de decimal place value, moving from right to left, right has the smallest values, left has increasing values. If it's a decimal point and there's a digit two places to the right, that is in the hundredths place. Think about a penny. It's worth one one hundredth of a dollar. If it is one place to the right of the decimal point, which is right here in the middle, that big black dot, it is the tenths place. Think of a dime. A dime is one tenth of a dollar. Now, once I'm past the decimal point to the left, I go normal place value that you guys are all familiar with, okay? So this right here is the ones place. This is a tens. This is the hundredths. This is tenths, and this is tens. This is 10 whole dollar bills. This is one tenth of a dollar bill. Same for hundredths. It is one one hundredth of a dollar bill. So I'll show you an example of what that looks like, okay? So here we have... We need to add $32 and $3.45. Well, if you know your decimal value um, when it comes to adding money, you know that $32 is the same as $32 and zero cents. So I have a zero in the hundredths place, a zero in the tenths place, my decimal point, of course. There's a two in the ones place and a three in the te um, tenths place. The value that I'm adding is $3.45. So I put the five right below the second zero in the hundredths place, because that's five cents. There's a four underneath the tenths place because that's 40 cents, decimal point. And then I just have three, three dollars in the ones place. So I'm gonna add vertically starting with the right. Zero plus five is five. Zero plus four is four. Bring down that decimal point. Do not lose track of it. Three plus two is of course five. And then three plus nothing is three. So the sum of $32 and $3.45 is $35.45. So once we know what our total is because we've added using um, our decimal point to keep track of place value, we can use the next dollar up to find out how much we need to pay in totality, okay? So once we know our total sum, we can use the next dollar up method to round the cost of our purchase up to the next whole dollar amount. We focus on the value beside the dollar sign to determine what the next dollar up will be, all right? So what's right beside the dollar sign? It is a five in this case. So if my total sum was $5.15, my next dollar up would be $6. Looking at the previous example, if my total price is $35.45, I look at these numbers right here next to the dollar sign and I say, hmm, 35, what comes after 35? What's one up? It's 36. So my next dollar up purchase would be $36. That way I don't have to struggle with counting change at the register. We went over this last week, but I feel it's healthy to review next dollar up just in case. 
Remember, we are looking at the cash value next to the dollar sign. It can get really easy to look at the coins, which are um, to the right of the decimal point, but we need not worry about that for next dollar up. Next dollar up is about the money, the value next to the dollar sign. So next dollar up for $7.20 is $8. Next dollar up for $3.04 is, look at the three, what comes after three? It's four. The next dollar up for $6.43 is six here. That means it's $7. And last but not least, the next dollar up for $1.67 is, of course, hmm, that's a one. Find one here. Next dollar up is two. Okay. So what if I'm adding multiple items? Because none of us really go to the grocery store or the mall or Target and only buy one thing, right? That's pretty difficult. So if we're adding multiple items, especially coins, we need to first convert them to decimal value, then line up the values vertically to keep track of place value. So step one, convert the amount to decimal value. Step two, line up the values vertically, up and down. Step three, make sure to keep track of place value, then add. So let's say that you're buying something and this is the cost of each item. So one item is $2, easy enough. One of the items is a quarter, ooh, one is a nickel, and then another one is two pennies. So we all know that a quarter is 25 cents, so what you would write down is you would write zero dollars point 25 cents, okay? So 25 cents, it is to the right of the decimal, the two is in the tens place because of 20, five in the ones place because five is 25, right? A nickel will be written as zero dollars and five cents. The five is going to go two places to the right of the decimal point because we're talking about hundredths. Okay, that's five one hundredths of a dollar. That's what a nickel is. And for pennies, if there's two of them, I would write that as zero dollars and two cents with the two in the hundredths place or two places to the right of the decimal point. And from there, we can just add vertically. All right, so let's do it. Zero plus five is zero. Five plus five is 10. Two plus 10 is 12. Ooh, so I know that I need to regroup. I bring the two down. I carry the one over because I need to regroup it. It's gonna go in the tens place now. One plus zero is one. One plus two is three. And of course, there's only zeros. So we're gonna bring a three down. Then we bring down the decimal point. And of course, it's just two and a bunch of zeros, so I bring down the two. The total value of all these items is $2.32. All right, so we're gonna practice this part. So go ahead and take out your calculator and we're gonna figure out how much does it cost? How much am I going to pay in total for these items? We'll start on the left side. I have here what looks like a pint of milk, um, maybe a small pint of ice cream. This looks like a gallon of milk or a quart, and then some cheese slices. So the milk is $2.43, the ice cream is $3.12, the milk is $1.78, and the cheddar is $2.12. When you type this into your calculator, you're gonna have to do it one thing at a time. So you would first start with adding 2.43 plus 3.12 or $2.43 plus $3.12. Make sure to keep track of the decimal point. I notice a lot of you will overlook the decimal point and so you'll treat it as 243 and 312, but those are incorrect values because you are, you're not accounting for the true cost of the item. Once you have the sum of $2.43, plus $3.12, you're gonna click the add addition sign, and now you're gonna add $1.78. You will click the equal sign. One more time, you'll push addition, and you will add $2.12. When you add all four of these items up, the total cost 
is $9.45. So if I'm using next dollar up, I look at this nine and I say, hmm, what comes after nine? It's 10. So my next dollar up purchase would be $10 for this. Let's look at the um, question on the right. We have some tortillas, some crackers, some macaroni, and some frozen french fries. All right, a lot of carbs. So we're adding $1.12 plus $2.76 plus $2.14 and $3.3838. So in your calculator, the decimal point will literally be that little, um, that little button that just has a point. It looks like a period, what you would end a sentence with. So you would start with, um, going from the top, you type in 1.12 cents added to 2.76 cents. All right, so if you add each of those down and you do it correctly, your total sum will be $9.40, oddly similar to our previous example. And of course, just like our previous example, the next dollar of purchase is going to be $10. Why $10? Because there is nine next to the dollar sign. If I think of a number line, what comes after nine? It's 10. So each of these, the next dollar of purchase is $10. We will practice this skill more in class today. We won't really practice it with adding too many um, items. I think we're just practicing with adding two items but it's helpful to, to get to know and be familiar with adding multiple items because realistically, that's how it is when you go shopping, okay? I will see you guys in your meeting today. Take care.